Folks, my first guest is an independent senator from Vermont who wants to be our next president. Please welcome Senator Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Welcome back. Good to be with you. Always nice to have you on. I gotta say, you, you, you're, look, you're looking spry. You're looking good. Even though, and I want to put this up, not to bring up any bad memories or anything, you were here in September the last time, and just days after you were here, you had a heart attack. I want to apologize for how tough I was on you that night. <laughs> That's just what happens. That's how hard I bring it. See, Jill Brown was here, and her kidneys failed. <laughs> See, I knocked on wood that night. Turns out this is plastic, and that was it the is. problem. Yeah. It is. I apologize to you again. <laughs> it's, it's not your fault. Um, okay, there's a, there's a lot to talk about in the world and in the campaign. I'd like to start off with uh, the, the recent uh, possibly uh, war with Iran. Um, the United States, just to recap, uh, we sent a drone strike at the president's command to kill head of the Quds Force, uh, Qasem Soleimani. Um, Nikki Haley has said that the only people mourning Soleimani are Democratic leaders. Have you seen any Democratic leaders mourning Soleimani? Are you mourning Soleimani? Anything you'd like to say back to Nikki Haley right now, perhaps with a uh, fragrant gesture? <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody I know is mourning Soleimani, Soleimani. But I'll tell you what we are fearful of. You know, Stephen, I think about the modern history of this country. And I remember Vietnam. That was my generation. And I remember the war in Iraq. Those are the two worst foreign policy blunders in the modern history of this country. And both of those wars were built on lies. You know, people, you know, I know. I just want to point out, I just want to point out that candidate Trump agreed with you. Yeah, well, candidate Trump agreed that Iraq was the worst decision. Yeah, but it was, Here's the point. The point is that both of those wars, which caused such incredible suffering in our country, 59,000 American soldiers dead uh, as a result of the Vietnam War, probably more died even after they came back, a generation really enormously impacted. Uh, the war in Iraq, 4,500 of our people, hundreds of thousands of Iraqis dead. We spend trillions of dollars that should be invested in healthcare, in education, in infrastructure. <laughs> Trillions of dollars spent in that war based on a law you remember. You, you remember it very well. I, I guess, you know. Sure, yeah. Yeah, you know, we were told, <laughs> we were told that Saddam Hussein had uh, weapons, mass weapons of destruction, chemical weapons mm -hmm. tied into Al-Qaeda, all a lie. And all of that suffering. And then at the end of all of that, all of the death, all of the suffering, trillions of dollars of expenditures we get booted out of Iraq, they no longer want us there. So I will do everything that I can uh, to stop a war with Iran that I think will be a disaster. The administration, as I was talking about earlier in the show, the administration uh, sent representatives, uh, both from the military and, and, and from the cabinet, to have a, uh, a briefing at the Senate yesterday. Were you at these briefings? Yes. Okay. Mike Lee called these insulting. Would, did you find them insulting? How would you characterize these? Well, I am so used to Trump that I, you know, uh, and his administration, uh, that nothing surprises me. Uh, Isn't that part of the danger of this administration, yes, that is. we become inured to the yes, lies? Yes, it is. It, it really is. And, and he is what... And by the way, Mike Lee is a conservative Republican with whom I disagree on almost everything. But he and I have worked together, because Mike is maybe old-fashioned enough, as I am, to believe in the Constitution of the United States. <laughs> I know that is something... And what... That is something, you know, that Trump, I think, has not yet read or understands. <laughs> but what Mike made public today, which is true, I was there, in fact, sitting right behind him, what, when asked 
by the representatives of the military and the CIA. If, in fact, Trump decides to assassinate the leadership, the leader of Iran, would he have to come to Congress for authorization? And they could not give a clear answer on that. And here is the point, and I know that everybody knows this. The Constitution is extremely clear. It is the Congress of the United States that has war-making powers, not the president. And that is why... And that is why I have introduced legislation uh, which would prevent spending, giving Trump one nickel of money to go to war uh, in Iran. And there's another good piece of legislation that once again would bring up the War Powers Act to make sure that he could not go to war unless he had the authorization of the Congress. It has been a long time. And correct me if I'm wrong here, but it's been a long time since Congress has exerted that power. Why do you, how do you think we got here where Trump thinks he can act with such uh, impunity? You're absolutely right. And it is an unfortunate situation that that has existed. And I'll tell you what I think the answer is. You know, and I got to say this, you know, it is politician, a president gets up there, we're going to be tough. And these are evil guys. We're going to go to war. Wow. And your poll ratings go up. And then people say, well, wait a minute, you know, what are the unintended consequences of that? Well, how many people are going to die? How much is it going to cost us? Oh, candidate X or a congressman X is, is soft on terror. 30-second ad. Congressman, you know, X, he doesn't want to protect America. All right? And I really get very angry at that approach. Because we sit in the Congress in our beautiful rooms, beautiful studio over here, and we do not know what war is about. We dive uh, the former chairman of the Senate Committee on Veterans Affairs. I met with the mothers of the young men who lost their lives in that war. I met with the wives, met with the kids. I met with the soldiers who came back without arms and legs who are dealing with PTSD today. War is a horror. And it's time politicians understood that we have got to do everything humanly possible to avoid war. And I, and I got to say, Stephen, you know, I, I have to say that I know it is not sexy to talk about diplomacy. It is not sexy to talk about making sure that we have a great State Department with people who know the culture and the language of countries all over the world. I've met some of these people all over. They do a great job. It ain't sexy. It is much more powerful. It's better TV to talk about how we're going to kill this one and kill that one. But I believe the American people are sick and tired of endless wars. They want to improve lives for the American people. And, you know... Some people justifying this are pointing at the uh, AUMF of 2002. Right. The authorization of use of military force following the attacks of 9-11. Uh, right. right. I, I read the text the other night. It specifically says you can only go after people. You were authorized to go after people. The president is, and it would be this president as well, to go after people who uh, were responsible for the attacks or who aided in those attacks. Yes. And the 9-11 commission said there was no connection with Iran. So how can they still justify using that? Because you have, and I'm, you know, you're raising the right question. Thank you. You, <laughs> <laughs> you have an administration uh, which is led by a president who is a pathological liar. Um, <laughs> and, and I, I, honestly, Stephen, you know, it does not, you know, I disagree with many members in Congress. They're not pathological liars. But this president, honestly, in my view, does not understand the Constitution, does not respect the rule of law, is not particularly interested in democratic procedures. And that is why I consider him to be the most dangerous president in the modern history of this country, and I intend to defeat that president. Well, if you do, let's say you do. Some people say this, the, this present exchange is over. Others say Iran's going to take their time. There could be something months or years down the line. If you do win, 
How does a President Sanders respond to Iranian uh, bad action, aggression, the bombing of the oil fields in Saudi Arabia, the sponsoring of terror, Hezbollah? What do you do in response to that? Well, I'll tell you what we do. Uh, what we do is understand that we have a very volatile region, that for many, many years the United States has so sided with Saudi Arabia, led by Mo uh, Mohammed bin Salman, who is a murderer and a demagogue. He's our ally. And I think what we do is use our diplomatic power and our resources to demand that these people, whether they like it or not, are going to sit in a room and they're going to start working out the differences they have. Because I think the American people are tired of getting sucked into wars that are a result of their differences. But the, the differences are not just political differences, they're also religious differences I that. because the United States is sort of taking sides now in a Sunni Shia divide that has gone on for a thousand years. We have been the allies of Saudi Arabia from way back when. And you understand, I think people understand, that the leadership of Saudi Arabia murdered the journalist uh, Jamal Khashoggi in cold blood, cut him up. Uh, they are, will crush anybody who fights for democracy in Saudi Arabia consider women third-class citizens. So all that I'm saying, I'm not suggesting for one moment that any of this stuff is easy. It is not. But we have got to use our diplomatic power, we've got to use our financial uh, carrots and sticks to get people together. Not only uh, we turn Saudi Arabia uh, and Iran, but uh, the Israelis and the Palestinians, get people together around the world who are in conflict and see what role we can play in trying to avoid war. Um, what is your bar for military action? Look, there are times when we may well use. We have the greatest military in the world, and there are times when we may well have to use that military. But I believe that military action should be the last response, not the first response. Senator, we have to take a quick break. Uh, if you can stick around, you stick around, because we're right back with more Senator Bernie Sanders, everybody. <laughs> 